It's the Broadway show and we're back with another great one. I'm Tamsin Fidel. I'm independently owned and liberated and I think sleeping alone is underrated. Don't need a man for flatteries. Got a corn cob and some batteries. Broadway's new Farm to Table Fable Shuck is now nominated for nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical, and a big nod for Alex Newell. They're nominated for their first Tony Award. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. Alex Newell has delighted audiences on stage and on screen for years, but is now freshly Tony nominated for a show-stopping turn in Shucked. We sat down at Glasshouse Tavern. Thank you for bringing me to Glasshouse Tavern. Oh, you're this welcome. This is actually a, a big establishment it in the is. theater community. It is. It really is. I mean, this is a big social spot. It is. It's our Broadway. watering hole. Is there a certain spot or like you just kind of work the room? Uh, as Dolly Levi, I kind of work the room. <laughs> um, normally they give me the booth in the back, but then I just sit at the bar or I'm floating. Um, yeah, I am very Dolly Levi here. When you're stopping the show every night on Broadway Yay. and shocked as Yay. Lulu, uh -huh. It must be nice to walk in and have that energy every night. It is chaotic, to <laughs> say the least. No, it's wonderful. You know, it's nice when you can come to a place that you consider close to really home and ha be appreciated for that, yeah. for Lulu, for Shucked, for that number. This corn ain't gonna shuck itself. That number is something. It's something. Independently owned yes. and operated. I will never look at, that. if I ever see that sign somewhere, <laughs> I will never not be able Sing, sing that, that song. song, independently owned. When you get to do an original yes, role, yes, it's different. It's I mean, obviously, different. Asaka in yes. Once Island and, and Mama Will Provide was a, another was signature. My, that was a signature, but this yes. is my. He, yeah, this is this yours. This one is mine. You got to originate it on Broadway. I made those choices. I chose that key. There's something really special about that, getting to like craft your own song, because it, it's crafted directly for my skill set. Mm. So I can't blame anyone but myself right. for all of that. So are you prepared to sing this song for the, for rest, the rest of your of my career? Life? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> Mentally, yes. Uh, physically, I don't know yet. You know, a, a country fried show. Doing that kind of show in New York City, uh -huh. it's interesting. Very. And, and I feel like the show, everyone involved has just gone all out. Like, we are doing this. Yes. There's been corn everywhere. There's, There's puns in the subway stations. Just everywhere. And just, they just, started spray painting corn. I saw it on, on the, the sidewalk, sidewalk on my right way here. here. Get shucked. Yes. It's very corny. Corny. It's very corny. But it's smart. And yeah. we say it's about corn, but it's so much more. Yes. It's about community. It's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about joy. It's mm -hmm. about learning about yourself and finding new parts of who you are and who your community is. Yeah, but it's still just funny. It's funny. Mm -hmm. Robert Horn is ridiculously funny. Yeah. Actually, one of your jokes in the show, I repeat regularly. Which not, one? not as well. The last one. I mean, it killed me. Oh my goodness. The, uh, the, the, I may not have my virginity, but I still have the box that came in. Killed me. <laughs> that joke killed me. So let's talk about Lulu. Yes. We love Lulu. I mean, she has really enchanted Broadway this season. When you first heard about her, did you immediately say like, oh, I like this? this I is did. When I look at something and I read a script, I want to see myself in it. Sure. I don't want to have to work to find myself in it. I want to see myself in it. Is it a world that I like? Is it a, something that's familiar to me? Is it something that um, I can add to my own life, really, and learn from and grow from. And when I read Lulu, I was like, oh, wow, this is a person who is coming into their own while still having a very wildly successful life. I love how sweet you are in the show. I mean, you're very funny, as, as we already said, and you sing your face off, as the children say, but you're very sweet. And, and, and that's why I really loved seeing you get the opportunity to do something so well-rounded mm -hmm. like that and to get to see all the sides of you. Yes. Because when you can sing like that, they kind of just want the, you to the, be the diva. One thing. They want you to come out and You're do that moment. You're just the diva. You are the, the what is it, torch song. You mm. are the sing it to the back row. You are the moment, lights are blaring. Mm -hmm. You are, your throat is the production number, essentially. Mm -hmm. And it's lovely to be the sassy best friend, which I've always been, but still have this well-crafted 
arc. There was an earlier version of this musical, mm -hmm. right? Lulu was played by a cisgender woman. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're in a beautiful place in our industry where we are seeing all sorts of opportunities being given to all kinds of performers. Yeah. And what's really interesting about you playing Lulu is that nothing's ever pointed at or discussed. You're just Lulu. Yeah. You're just embodying Lulu. I am just a chocolate cis plus size woman on stage. <laughs> and you know, it speaks a testament to what's happening in the world right now. Yeah. When I'm on stage, nobody bats an eye, nobody questions anything, nobody thinks twice about anything. When people come and they just see Lulu on stage and they don't think twice about it, that proves the point of how something so special and so beautiful can exist in this world without you stigmaing it and without you pushing it down or thinking that it's dangerous. Because there is nothing dangerous other than me screaming at the top of my lungs at you for three and a half minutes. There's nothing dangerous about that on stage that's happening. Yeah. I like to have this world understand my art and understand my heart and understand my gift and un enjoy it and learn from that that they can apply it to the next person that they meet, whether they're cis or not, whether that they're white or black, whether that they're fat or skinny, or all of these things that make us so different, that we are truly just one person. So how are the people who've known you forever feeling about this new Tony nominated oh goodness, those moment? Those mean, nasty people that I love <laughs> are screaming every time someone says, it's about damn, I'm like, whoa, 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 calm down. I had just stepped on the scene the first time. Everyone is in love with it. Between me and Jay, it's just like a, a turnover for a lot of things. And it's a, a big change and shift that is one, welcomed, and two, just needed. Because the more that we don't change, the more talented people we cut out, the more stories we're not telling, the more things that we're ignoring that actually exist. My community, the people that I love behind me, they're my backbone. Those are the people that I go to crying to, those are the people that I go to with all of my, <laughs> my antics and my opinions, and we talk things out, and I'm so blessed to have a brilliant circle of friends. What a great Pride Month coming up. I know, it's Pride Month. I'ma be sober. <laughs> <laughs> Is Pride a word that you like relate to? There's half of me that like hates Black History Month and I hate Pride Month like a little bit. I understand the symbolism of mall. I understand yeah. everything that's with it and the, the, the need for pinpointing and celebration. But you know, I don't get to turn my queerness off at the end of June, just like I don't get to turn my blackness off on the 28th of February. So it's like, it, pride is, I am prideful 365 days out of the year of my community and my peers and myself.